nice new brother WP1 word processor. I could connect the Raspberry Pi up to the UART. I am actually going to take the time to write a whole new terminal emulator. Well, the cursor keys don't seem to want to work in VI, but this is loads of progress, uh, certainly less snow. I'm going to have to do something about that. Things remaining to do are snow, fix the state machine issues, uh, character attributes, and see if we can bump the board rate up. After the abject failure of the video capture quality in the last couple of videos, I put some time into getting direct video capture actually working. Uh, so the video output from the board here is now being sent to the PSOC board where it's being reformed into something a bit more similar to CGA so that my OSSC and CGA to RGB are actually capable of capturing it. It's not quite right. You can see that the text quality isn't brilliant but this is so much better than just filming the screen directly and the frame rate is such that it actually keeps up with my typing, which is nice. So, where were we? Well, there's some bugs. You can see that deleting text with Control u causes the cursor to go into the wrong place. That should be a fairly minor state machine uh, thing. I believe I know what's going on there. Those up arrows are beeps. But the biggest one is the snow, which you can see at the top of the screen. Now, I have also bumped the board rate up to 19.2 kiloboard, which makes the system so much more responsive, as you can see. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the dropped characters causing the columns to misalign there. Now, the good news is that I think that the same problem is causing both the snow and the dropped characters which is that the software on the brother is spending too long doing things and isn't responding to incoming bytes quickly enough and isn't responding to vsync pulses quickly enough so i think that i may be able to fix both of those at the same time but this is going to require some experimentation so I'm going to go over to the PC and take a look at the code. So here is our program's main loop. This is the thing that drives the way the entire terminal works. What it does is it loops forever. It attempts to update the screen if we're in the vertical blanking period. It then attempts to read and print a byte from the interface, if there is one present. It tries to read a byte from the keyboard and if the interface is writable it tries to push it. It's possible for keyboard push here to push multiple bytes into the ring buffer and uh, this will then pull a single byte each iteration out of the ring buffer and write it to the interface. Now I expect these to be pretty quick because they're not actually doing much. Most of the time is going to be spent in uh, this routine because it may have to do stuff like memory shuffling to scroll the screen and this routine which is going to be flushing the display. It has to copy all the data from the back buffer onto the front buffer. Now I believe that the reason that we are dropping characters is these routines, specifically this one, display flush, is taking so long that by the time we get back to here and pull a byte out of the interface, the interface's own FIFO has filled up and has dropped bytes. In addition, there is another problem. Let me just sketch out a bit of a diagram. So 
imagine a graph with time going down this way. A frame extends from here to here. The vertical blanking period is here. So all of this stuff down here is data. We can only update the screen in the, in, during the vertical blanking period, which is here. And what we expect to happen is update starts, update returns. However, uh, we, when update returns, we finish this routine. We ro go through to the end of the loop. We jump back to the top and, hey, look, uh, we're still in the vertical blanking period. So it runs the update again, which is because it takes so long, it overlaps into the actual display period and generates snow. And there is another op another possibility which is that the update just does still run once but takes so long that it doesn't fit entirely in the vertical blanking period. So let us do a bit of work. Here is our update routine. Uh, here is the chunk of code that actually checks to see if we're in the vertical blanking period. Now, what I'm going to do is add a variable into which we are going to store the previous state of the vertical blanking period. So that would be let me think how we're going to do this. So we get it, fetch it into a, uh, we fetch the address into HL, we load it, like so. So now here in the comparison code, we have access to both the previous state and the current state. We only want to run DPY flush if the previous state is false and the current state is true. This means that it will run once the first time into the vertical blanking period it then won't run again until we exit the vertical blanking period and enter it again. So what we want to do is uh, we do a ret z So if we're not in the vertical blanking period at all, we don't need to do the rest of the logic. We then want to XOR the current state with uh, no, we don't. That's over. That's overthinking it. At this point, we know that we are in the vertical blanking period. So all we need to do is check to see if the old state is false. Wait, true. Uh, So uh, A here is 0 if 
we were not in the blanking period or two if we were. So return if zero if we're not in the blanking period. So that we now know that we are in the blanking period, we want to return if the previous time round we were in the blanking period and therefore C must be non-zero. Okay, so that might help. The other thing we're going to do is speed up the actual refresh. There's several things we can do. We could use the DMA engine to copy the data, which is much faster than just doing an LDIR. It's more code, but it should be faster, so much faster that it will pay for itself. But the simplest thing we're actually going to do is to remove this. So what these two lines do is they advance DE to point to the next row of video memory using arithmetic. Uh, BC is a no, sorry, HL is advanced for us by LDIR. In fact, this is a waste of time. We don't need to do that because that since the loop is unrolled, we can just load the correct value here, which gets calculated here. So we just duplicate that bit of code. like this. And this should give us, well, this DE line is three bytes. Our previous code where we called add AHL was four bytes, five bytes, two to load A with the value to increment, three to call the subroutine, uh, and in a reasonable number of cycles because we have to do the call and the return, which involves stack operations, stack operations are slow. So, I think this, sh assuming I haven't made any stupid mistakes, this should be a big improvement. So I am just going to try it and see what happens. Okay, well we're still getting snow. Just wait for, there we go. Uh, what happens if we do this? We're still dropping characters. Okay, so this suggests... Hmm. So we've got three lines of snow and we're using less code. I cannot remember how much, how much snow we had previously. So was this an improvement or not? I'm going to have to go and check the video footage. If it's less, then it has actually helped. So we can do more. I think this is going to need the DMA engine. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go check the footage and see how much that's improved by, if at all. And let's try the DMA engine and see what that does. 10 frames per second. Why is it recording at 10 frames per second? I told it to record at 30. This is bizarre. Anyway, uh, the resulting video does actually work, even if it is only at 10 frames per second, and it's showing three lines of snow. So this hasn't made any difference at all, which is interesting. Anyway, let's go find some Arc Brother WP1 boot Z80. So this is the code needed to run a DMA. If we compare it to what we've got here, three bytes, three bytes, two bytes. This is many bytes, but it should be so much faster that even though we're doing more work, it will do the copy faster. So, Let's give this a try and see what happens. 
So we want to let's actually just copy all of this over here. The DMA engine works with physical addresses. So the source is going to be the back buffer address which is at this offset I believe uh, we are loaded at yep that's correct target physical address is uh, here because that's where the video memory lives. In fact, it's going to be here. Number of bytes we want to copy is 91. So So we need to calculate the back buffer address, and we have a line to do that here. And then we output it to the, we configure the DMA source. We then want to do the same thing for the destination address. And the this is the top byte of the address, so in this situation it's a 2, in this situation it's a 1. Uh, the video memory is mapped so that E000 is, it goes to physical address 10000, so we don't want to add anything on there. 91 bytes, HL, 91. Actually, we're going to do screen width. Oh, yeah, and I also changed the syntax here slightly. Yeah, I found a new copy of ZMac that does um, proper Z180 instructions. So we don't need the old macros anymore. And rather than outputting everything through A, it's cheaper to load a 16-bit value into HL and emit it like this. Okay, now uh, so we start the DMA, but we then need to wait for the DMA to finish before we can reprogram the uh, the DMA engine for the next line. So we need a loop. I think we need to fix these. I think we want to do copy dstat to a 
and it with oh it's one of these flags and it with something and then branch back to dot one if the flag is set and I will just go and look that up actually from looking at this code when the DMA engine is in burst mode, which has got this mmod bit in the mode register, which is this one, set to 1, then the CPU will halt until the DMA transfer is complete. So I don't believe we actually need any logic down here. However, we probably also want to control the weight states in D control because I don't believe we want any and if there are and by default you get some and I believe this will slow things down a lot so up here we only need to do this once we load a with uh, let me see. These are the weight state registers. Number of weight, number of weight states introduced to CPU or DMAC address cycles. Uh, weight insertion bits. So I think we want those to be zero. DMA sense bits, we're not using external DMAs, that's irrelevant. Mode bits, uh, this is for memory to IO transfer modes, we're not using those either. So let's just uh, zero A and write it to D control. And I think I've got all of these backwards. Yeah, I always get the order of parameters mixed up. Yes, that's better. Oh, and I forgot to change this one. Uh, out, naught. D control. Okay. So let's see if this is any faster or indeed if it works at all turns out that the weight state stuff was wrong and I do need some weight states otherwise nothing happens at all but it is doing something it's not very useful so I think that uh, it's copying the wrong data onto the screen but it is at least doing something and the terminal still, still works you can see the uh, the cursor move However, there's still some snow, which is annoying. We only have one line of snow, so this is faster. So I need to try and speed up the DMA stuff a little. Um, I know how to shave a few cycles off. I think I'm going to have to do some experimentation with the weight states to see what we can get away with. Nope, that hasn't worked. We now have only one line of snow using one weight state, but if we go down to zero weight states, then uh, the system crashes. And I still haven't figured out why it's writing barred eyes to the screen. So given that this basically isn't working, we just don't seem to have enough time in the V-blank interval to update the entire screen. We're going to have to be a bit cleverer and update the screen over multiple V-blank cycles.
And if we're going to do that, then there's not really much point using the DMA stuff, which I can't make work anyway. So let's just go back to using the LDIR stuff. Also, the way the screen is uh, flickering every now and again is a capture issue. There's something not quite right about the about my OSSC settings. The OSSC doesn't really like this really strange screen mode. Okay, so we back out all of our code here by holding down the undo key. Um, right, let's just go forwards a bit so that we have our new uh, only run the routine once code. And let's grab the Uh, the update code. Yeah. Okay, and this is the point where I started work on the uh, DMA stuff. Right. What we're going to do is we are going to track the dirty state of each scan line. The number of routines we have that actually draw on the screen is quite small. So that's fairly straightforward. And then in our flush code, we are going to test to see if any individual scan line is dirty and only update it if it is dirty and also give up if uh, we see that we're not in V blank anymore. Right, this does mean that the last update is going to overlap with the end of the V blank. Um, no, we're going to have to be a, be slightly cleverer than the, than that. What we're going to do is we are going to track uh We are going to keep track of uh, the number of scan lines, the number of rows that we're actually going to update. So that each time round we'll only update so many rows to keep the redraw time below the limit so it all fits in the V blank. So. Let's go for eight because this routine is actually going to be slower. So our redraw loop. Uh, we are going to just thinking of what, what we're going to set up. We want to look at, uh, okay, this, 
the Z80 doesn't have any decent indexing operations or any comparisons because I want to work through the dirty buffer until we reach the end but I want to avoid having to do a 16-bit comparison but I don't think we can So Oh, this is annoying. Okay, I'm going to do this thing uh unrolled. So we're not updating in order anymore, therefore we can't rely on HL being automatically set. So we have to we have to set it here so that every row we are going to get the address of the relevant slot in the dirty buffer load it if it is zero meaning the row is not dirty we jump forward Otherwise, we can do better than that. We unset the dirty bit. We then do the copy. We decrement the number of rows left to update and give up if zero. Uh, this needs to be a local label I can't remember how to do that local to their file macro labels uh, label starting with a dot a temporary and a reset whenever a non-temporary label is used Macro call expands the text of the macro's body, which each local simple question mark SK. Can I do that? Oh, or I can do something simpler. That's not working. Rept is obviously not really a macro. So we're going to have to make one. 
by putting all this code in here. Like this. Okay, and what does our listing... That was more than what I wanted. That was what I wanted. What does our listing say? It's definition of the macro, invocation of the macro. So load address of dirty buffer plus line number, load it into A, skip to yep, A001, which is here. Cool. We don't have to unroll this. We could use uh, actual code. We could use a loop, but that would be slower and it would use up a, um, it'd just be generally more annoying. All right, so we now need to set the dirty buffer. So print A Actually, let's not do that. Okay, so print A, we are going to dirty the row. This touches no registers other than HL. HL and A. The input character is in C, therefore that is safe. Uh, this is going to want to do the same thing. We haven't done that bit yet. Move the cursor, delete a line. do that so this is copying mul this is moving multiple rows we're going to have to dirty multiple lines Uh, so that's going to be um, So this is going to 
set the bit for line Y and leave the appropriate address in HL. Um, okay, I need to figure out how many bytes we want to ch update. So to delete a line, it's from here to the end of the screen. In fact, it's the same code is going to be needed by this. So let's do dirty to end of screen. the so we put that in B because this then allows us to do Right, so this will set all dirty bytes from the current row to the end of the row to 1. So, and again we want this here, dirty to end of screen. Clear a line again. This is just going to be dirty row. And this is used to clear everything, so that should be everything we need. So let's try it and see what happens. Well, it's a nice steady screen, no snow. Uh, that was a there's a capture dropout, so let's try a scroll. Kind of working, to be honest. Oops. Yeah, okay. Right, there is snow when it does that update. So maybe I need to reduce the number. We are doing quite a lot of extra work between each scan line. And there are fewer dropped bytes as well because we're doing less work let's just try clear right well that didn't work at all interesting that we get about a second worth of snow after each call so I think it's trying to do something. All right, well, I think I've broken clear line. No, do not save. VI, yeah, that's upset too. Okay, I think there are some bugs, but on the whole, it's mostly working. So uh, let's go and take another look at the code. Yeah, a uh, clear line failed because I called dirty row that uh, modifies HL. 
So what this is doing here is it's writing lots of spaces to the dirty buffer. Uh, that's never going to work. So we actually want to put that up there. So I think that's safe. Um, I don't want to decrease update rows too much, to be honest, because uh, the, f the lower this is, the higher the number of frames it will take to, to update the screen. A frame, we have 62.5 frames per second. It's actually pretty quick. Uh, let's let's uh, let's set this to one and see how bad it can be. I think. So um, where was I? Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to do was to clear the was to set the dirty buffer on first run. So I thought that happened in TTY in it actually. Yeah, do ED all. Clears the whole screen. It calls Clurel for everything, but of course Clurel was broken. So yeah, okay, this this ought to be this ought to be working now. Okay, how's this behaving? Yeah. Let's try clear. Yeah, you see updating one row at a time. Scrolling is slow and kind of weird. Yes, you can see how strange things happen as it updates part of the screen at a time. So we definitely need to be faster than that. On the other hand, it does not appear to be dropping bits. Nano works, more or less. Okay, well, whatever's going on there is not. Appears to be not updating, not scrolling that part of the screen. So no, let's try VI. Uh, let's try VI with a um, what's a decent sized file? RC local. There we go. Yeah, that's that's very unhappy. Oh, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Or do I? Did I remember to set the TTY size? I think I actually have. You have to do this every run. STTY rows. STTY calls. Ugh. I cannot type. Okay, I cannot remember the command to get it to tell me the screen size. Also, I cannot reliably type on this thing while staring down at the little phone screen, which is down here, which is what I'm actually seeing the output on at a certain amount of delay. Okay, so it's better. We're going to have to up the update count but it's definitely plausible and with a reasonably steady image. No snow, even when it's busy. That's a good thing. Here it is with update rows set to eight as it was before. And it's, oh, there's snow. Yeah, eight is a bit too optimistic. 
but it's definitely working. Excellent. And we do need to fix some of the escape codes. You can see the, the man uh, prompt at the bottom is truncated at the beginning. Oh, I see missing characters. Cursors. Well, actually, it's not, it's not the end of the world. There's a simple fix we can do for that. So we've got this int stat here that tests to see whether the interface is writable. Well, what we're going to do is... I rather want to inline this to avoid the call ret overhead. Uh, Right, let's move these into constants. Uh, we then need to go to interface and max the constants. Yep. And what we're going to do is go here to display and every iteration through we are going to see whether the interface is readable and give up if it is so what this will do is, if it ever sees the interface is readable, it immediately stops, returns to the main loop, where we read the byte from the interface, and then we continue with the redraw uh, the next frame. It will glitch the. Uh, it will glitch the redraw. Do six actually a little, but I don't think anyone will notice this. So, yeah, we're still in the man page. Control L to redraw. Uh, that's not great. Yeah, uh, what this is doing is it's drawing a few, it's updating a few rows. Then a character comes in, so it stops redrawing. The character is processed through the state machine. This causes uh, the screen to scroll, which dirties everything. Therefore, when it does the redraw, it starts again at the top of the screen. So that's not brilliant. I mean, it's producing correct results. It's just not a very nice user experience. So in fact, we want to prioritize redrawing the screen over running the TTY state machine. But we can do that by adding another ring buffer.